What's up guys, Cascade Wing here. Here we're doing a review of Horse Valley. So here we got our horse. So let's start with the review. So basically for the stall at least, this you get your starter horse here. You, you leveled it up. You can also name it. You also have your stall here. And here's my horse. Go right here, rename it. Let's just call it Sea Biscuit. There we go. It's invalid. There we go. You can clip like saddles and stuff. I don't have any, at least right now. You get all these stats as well. You have these stats you to train. My, I believe you get random stats. I'm not entirely sure. They think just kind of randomize it between different stats. Like if you use like one to like. Like maybe it'll, it'll like, like randomizes it between like one and twelve for each of your stats that you start out with. You also level it up, which is completely different. There's also like other things like you know like cleaning it, bringing it water, feeding it. I'm not sure what this is for, but I'll see if I can find out. So here we are riding it. I'm I'm really liking the um, animation. I mean, it's not the best animation, horse animation I've ever seen, but it's definitely a pretty good one. And you can tell it's fairly professional and, you know, polished. And you basically just kind of run around, jumping over stuff, basically is what, how you train your horse. Like, I failed that jump pretty hard. It's basically what you do when you just kind of level it up and stuff. There's also like different speeds, like right now I'm idle, it tells you right here, and there's like a walk, go to the trot, you got a canter, and then you get to finally gallop. You hit these stars, which is basically what, is what affects your stats, I like this one's for swiftness, you go to other areas to get those different stats, it like spawns, it's like, you know, like start race thing up here, you're supposed to go to these stars, and it'll give you the stats and stuff. So that's basically training. I'll show you what the, what the other activities are to train your your horse here, and then that'll be it for training. Basically, what you do is you go around and grab these stars. This one's a lot easier than the racing one. Racing one, you have to. It's best up the racing on the racing one. As you run, you stop right before the star to go to trot, and you just kind of walk around around the barrel. Here, basically, all you do is kind of walk around and get these stars. It's not that hard at all. It's fairly easy, fairly simple. So I'll move on to the next one, and that's pretty much it from for discipline. Here is strength. So for strength, you have to jump over these um hurdles, I guess is what they're called. But anyway, what you do, as you can see there, you have to jump over them correctly, or you will lose health, and you also won't get any XP. I like, I like this one the most because you get these because you get these different level difficulties. Each will give you different XP, which I think is really nice to have. And it's also sort of difficult at times to get the, the these high ones right here. But it's also the most rewarding to get them, so it, So it's also pretty nice. But it is a lot, lot more riskful because it is like like these ones are basically just cake walks. Like you could do them at, at walk speed. That, that, that's how easy they are. And all those top ones you have to be really careful about. You need to time them just right. See, like that was really bad. So that's it for strength, and I'll be right back. The next one is agility, and basically you walk between these poles multiple times, and then you basically just do it again. This one's the most simplest, I think, other than, than discipline. This one at least has some more to it. So that's pretty much it for agility. There really isn't much else to talk about. I said that it's easy. It's easiest when you're at the slower speeds until you get high, really high agility. Then it will get pretty easy. So that's pretty much it for the skills. Another thing for skills, you have to actually walk through the entrance to actually get these things to pop up, as you cannot simply just jump over the fence. 
So it's probably at this point where you're, when you're looking at your stats or your horse has just stopped running and you're wondering what's going on. Well, you, there are also needs at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And how you, this is how you fill them. So for water, you go over to this. This is probably what I don't like is that you have to go all the way over to one of these. Um, well, this is the only one to this well. And it's the only one you have to go all the way over here. And then you you get to feed your horse the water or have, make him drink it or whatever. I think it takes too long and you also have to go all the way to the well no matter where you're at. So you can be pretty, pretty much anywhere. You can be all the way, you know, at the farmhouse on a race or something like that and your first will just disappear all of a sudden and you have to go all the way to the well to fill it. So I just don't like that. But that's my opinion on it. So we'll move on to hunger. So hunger is filled by going to this vendor, I guess, and paying ten dollars or whatever they're called in here. Four dollars, I guess. And you could either choose, as Claire asks you, what a lovely day, how can I help you? You can either choose to buy carrots, or you can say you can't help. <laughs> say she can't help you, which I think is amazing. You can say someone can't help you. I thought that was kind of funny at first. It kind of died off there as I came over here, but it was kind of funny. And then, and then you feed your horse. I found it's a glitch if you feed him while you're on the horse, so I suggest you don't do that. Although sometimes it fixes, and other times it just breaks and you have to rejoin the game. Now groom is the most simplest. To groom, all you have to do is click on your horse, and it just fills it up. Doesn't matter if you're riding it or anything. So groom is basically just kind of pointless, because you can just it's just so easy to fill. But it's still there, so you might as well just watch for it. And then you're wondering what to do next. Well next, you have races. They will appear in the top as a timer between different there's several different modes that you can play and the first one is rate once the timer finishes you just hit play after you hit the play button and it finds enough players to play you it sends you to the track which is where you race other people there's basically no much else to it you just kinda race it's basically just follow common sense as far as normal racing goes and this is basically how you get your money and for race, the, the main skills that you need will be discipline, which is from these kind of circular paths here, and swiftness, which is from the aforementioned barrels. Racing is also the main way you level up. It's actually the only way. So two races will pretty much just get you up to level two. That's pretty much it for the races. Well, just the race mode. And next is steeplechase. Steeplechase is the more interesting of the two, as steeplechase involves you jumping over some grass. Don't ask why, but there's grass. And then a turn. The turns do have absolutely no hurdles to jump over, which is nice, but I wish there was more to make it hard. Like maybe like, like different sizes of the hurdles maybe, because it's just honestly too easy. But at least it's more different than race to actually get, make a legitimate game mode, which I think is what the purpose of it is. I just wish there was more. Another suggestion to the races is to have, you know, like lanes. Because basically, if you don't hug the wall when you get to the turns, you basically lose. Unless you just completely out outspeed everyone, pretty much. So that's pretty much another suggestion to the races. And after all of that, and a couple levels up, and you've gained some money. So you're probably wondering, what do I do with this? Well, you pretty much go to the store, and you can pretty much buy accessories for your horse, and even clothes and such for yourself. It is extremely expensive, though, for the saddles, as the saddles go from 750 to over, you know, 6000 So it gets pretty ridiculous. Bridles are a bit more decent, with 300 Hats are pretty much all over the place, from anything from about 50 all the way up to about three, three or 4000 Clothes pretty much sit all around the same price, with shirts being at 50 and pants following the same trend, also within $50. Is that as you buy stuff, they actually disappear from the shelves, and stuff is randomized between a certain, you know, sets of stuff. So you basically just. So I like that because it basically 
actually makes the, the refresh other than at any time you want to. And as far as accessory goes, they go from about 6000 to 750 similar to the saddles. You can also buy new horses, which I think is interesting. They are extremely expensive though, so we can be on the lookout for that. Anything from about 64000 to about 1000 There are also some interesting breeds here, such as the Unicorn and the Nightmare, which looks like stuff straight out of science fiction. There's also a Zebra, which is fairly expensive. And it's pretty much it as far as the interesting horses. Horses are also restocked every 10 minutes, so what you saw last time may not be there again. Other than that, there are also quests, which serve really no function except to actually, you know, to, to give you other stuff and to break up the monotony. Most of them are fairly interesting though, so, well, not as far as the storyline goes. The storyline is basically just I lost the spare, go in here and get it, or something is attacking my. My cows go and take it out. But the actual impl implementation of it is fairly good. So it definitely gets a pass in my book as far as creativity, as far as how the quests are completed. It's also fairly rewarding once you actually finish the quest. And you get some money from it. <laughs> it's the most you'll get from them is some money, maybe some extra accessories. But there isn't much else to them, other than just feeling good for getting someone's hair back from, you know, places. And then getting their bear back. And separate, in a different quest, getting their bear back from a maze that's glitching all over the place and you can barely get through. Other things involved um, doing in the game are going to the saloon and getting food and drinks. That was just sodas and turkey legs for some reason. There is a jukebox, but, but it doesn't work though, which is disappointing. You can also go through these abandoned buildings and wonder what happened to the people within as their walls were blown out. You can also go to the church and worship to the horse gods. You can also go to the woods and finally use your bow to kill wolves for, for some reason. Although they don't attack back, so I'm guessing they're not completely functioning just yet. But for killing them you get some money, which other than the money is kinda of pointless. Other than just killing, you know, statues of wolves. I guess you can also get completely tactical and do some complete awesome ho horse archery stunts. But since there's actually no wolves attacking you back, I don't see what the point of it is. It would be cool if there was some PvP maybe going on with your horses, but I, I would be surprised if, if the old creator doesn't want to do that. But it just would have been cool to have some horse archery PvP. There are also some game passes. There are three of them that you can buy in game. One's the pro one. It gives you the pro tag, a gold chat tag, sprinting when you're off your horse, access to the VIP. P stables, which gives you nothing except just a larger stable, I guess. I'm not going to buy it, so I don't know what it does, but just a larger stable. And you can get, it increases your limit to 5 horses. Horse endurance increases your, takes 50% longer for hunger, first, and grooming to lower, which I guess could be helpful. There's also 2 times experience, which gives, which gives your horse 2 times experience, which is basically just, just kind of a, just kind of like a premium thing, I guess. There are also daily quests as well as the normal quests that you can do, and they pop up here and they refresh every day, so you can do them constantly if you want to. So that's pretty much it for your review. As of now, I'm going to rate it. So basically, after well, basically I'm saying that there's not much else to do afterwards, because really it's just kind of grinding and continuing to level up your horse, which just gets kind of boring after a while doing the same exact activities over and over again. And doing the same races over and over again. It just honestly gets boring to me. I'm sure some people like it, but it's just honestly boring to me. There just isn't enough races, enough content to really justify all the grinding. Especially when, since when you're level 3 and I'm already dominating people. Just because I'm racing in front of them at the very beginning. I would suggest like pumping stuff in a discipline. 
and perhaps swiftness a little bit, because you can just basically just jump out of front of people and just keep moving back and forth to where they, they, they can't pass you whatsoever. So now I'm going to give a rating. I'm going to have to give this game a 7 out of 10, simply because the game just doesn't have enough content for all the grinding. There just isn't enough at the end of the grind fest. So there just isn't anything except breeding. And breeding just kind of gives you another horse. That's basically all it does. And to get do that breeding, you have to grind a lot of money to actually go go buy more horses. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The game has a lot of effort and polishment, which gives it the 7. But it just doesn't have enough content to keep you playing, which is how, how I rate the rest of it. And I'm probably not going to play this game very much afterwards. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.